In this tutorial, we will explore the antennas functions because this is a really significant part of modeling, of picking the right antenna, the right settings, and manipulating those settings to represent your system in the real world. So we have two key choices with antennas. We can either work with a manufacturer's antenna pattern, which is normally provided as polar plot data, like here, or we can build our own with a custom pattern. Before we can play with either type, uh, we're just going to explain these metadata parameters at the bottom. Polarization is self-explanatory. This is the orientation of the pattern in relation to the horizon. So if we're vertical, we are an antenna which is sticking up. And if we're horizontal, we're an antenna which is lying down. The default is vertical, which you'll find on most systems. The gain value is the antenna's efficiency in a given direction. The default for a dipole is, is 2.1 dBi, so that's decibels isotropic. You may also see dBd, decibel dipole, so 0 dBd is 2.1 dBi. Now, I'm just going to demonstrate both the gain and the polarization before we get into other topics. So I'm going to go and pick a template from my list here. I have a uh, drone and this drone is on 2.4 gigahertz with 100 milliwatts of power. And I'm going to place this drone at 100 meters above the earth with the default gain. So let's just model that and see what it looks like. So omnidirectional coverage with a bit of uh, loss from the very large buildings as you'd expect. Interesting observation on this heat map here is the signal strength. This is weak because the drone is operating at its limit. It's weak and it gets weaker as we get towards the transmitter location. This is because of this antenna pattern. It's a donut shape with gain, horizontal gain out to the sides, but it has a null directly beneath it. So as we sit and the controller stood on the ground, that is the coldest point to be stood to receive the signal with this particular antenna pattern. If we change the polarity of the antenna which is on the drone and made it horizontal and repeated that calculation, we see we get coverage that doesn't go as far out to the edges, but it does solve the problem of the null where the operator is stood. And that's with basic gain. If we added a high gain dipole, uh, we could expect better coverage out to the edges. Let me just switch that polarization back to vertical and then we're demonstrating vertically polarized 4 dBi dipole. It still has a null, you still get weaker coverage here. But the SNR value out here at the edge has improved by a few decibels. Azimuth and tilt uh, don't really apply with this pattern, however they will apply when we come to use a custom pattern. So now that we've played with a dipole, let's go and grab a template from the database. So click this dialog here to open the Manage My Antennas form. And in here, we've got a search box. We can search for a manufacturer or a model. So I want to search for Tirana. So I click Tirana. I find a manufacturer, Tirana Wireless. I find a pattern. I click this pattern and I see two polar plots here. So this is the pattern I'm looking for. It's a high gain Tirana panel. And I'm going to add this by clicking the green button here to add it to my list. It says favorited pattern hash 27267. So now on my list, I have a new pattern. It says Tirana dipole. If I click this, you'll see polar plots for the Tirana pattern. Now this one works at about three and a half gig. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change a few settings. Let's go and set up for this particular antenna. I'm going to use that power. I'm going to set the gain at 22 dBi. 
This is a high gain pattern, remember. You can override the gain value regardless of what the, uh, the pattern prescribes. In the same way, you can misuse an antenna with a different frequency. It's not recommended, but you can do it. So we've set the frequency, we've set the gain. If we go and check the feeder box here, you'll see the total ERP and the effective radiated power and the isotropic radiated power. So we're going to be pushing out a lot more power now that we have a high gain pattern. Now this is a directional panel, so let's point it south. 180 degrees. And let's click the green button and model that coverage. So I can see, first of all, clearly directional coverage to the south. Now the height is still at 100 meters for my drone, so let's bring that down to earth and make that a little bit more realistic and repeat. There we are. Now we're getting something that's more realistic. So this is a, a Tirana panel on a 12 meter mast pointing south. So let's go and save those settings and say this is uh, this is Tirana, it's 3.5 gig and it's south. And now I can grab that template from my list and get those antenna patterns back quickly in the future for anywhere in the world. So that's a template. We can also tilt that and I could put on a slight bit of down tilt. Remember we are up on a 3 meter mast. So if I, sorry, 12 meter mast, if I put on 3 de degrees of down tilt, this is down towards the earth. This pattern is now going to look down. And if I remove the bottom layer here, you'll see that coverage has changed very slightly. So coverage will have become more focused in the near field here. And where we're on the edges of the network here, uh, we have lost coverage because we're tipping down. Okay, so that is a pattern. The next type of antenna is a custom pattern. A custom pattern is useful for when you don't have a data sheet or perhaps you're in a hurry. So we're going to build up the Tirana panel again this time, but working on the basis that we do not hold this information. We might just have a data sheet to hand. So we can type in the gain, it's 22 dBi. Uh, the azimuth and the tilt, as they were, uh, the beam width, now this is the horizontal plane, and then we have the beam width for the vertical plane. So the beam width for the Tirana panel, we're going to say is about 120 degrees. Notice that's become wider. The beam width for the vertical plane is a bit more narrow, so we're going to say uh, this one is about 80 degrees beam width. Front to back ratio describes uh, the gain on the forward lobe, the main lobe, versus the rear backscatter. So this is going to be high for a directional antenna. Uh, with a Tirana, it's actually about 36 uh, dBi front to back ratio. So now we model that and notice that that coverage is very similar to what we had before with the manufacturer's template. By taking our time with the settings, by putting in correct settings for these values, we're able to create a 90% best effort pattern without actually holding the actual pattern data. Now you can actually add patterns to Cloud RF if they're in the right format. So there's a form here when you're logged in. Uh, you can go to the antennas form where you can upload more patterns in ADF format, which is the antenna data format. We have a validator on the website where you can upload these patterns to validate them for errors and ensure you are compliant with the NSMA standard. There are two ways to set an antenna's azimuth. One you've already seen with typing in an azimuth and the second is clicking the compass here to actually track the azimuth of wherever the direction is that you're testing. So for example, if I was to follow the river up here. I place my cursor on the map and I can get the angle. It's 337. I type in the angle into here. Our antenna has been pointed in the polar plot. I then click calculate and I've modeled a directional Yagi antenna going up the river. Wherever I hover my cursor now, it's showing me the signal strength. If I was to switch to the path profile tool and click within the heat map here, it's also showing me 
the path and the signal strength here. Now that's understandable, assuming the antenna is static and it's not moving. But what if we want the antenna to face in the direction of where we're clicking? Well, to do that, it's quite easy. Just click the little compass. Click the compass, the path profile antenna azimuth will now follow the path direction. So watch this gain here. We're minus 10. If I click again, we've now shot up to 33 dB gain. So we've gained an enormous amount of power because the antenna is now facing in this direction. So wherever we click, that's where our antenna is facing. And if I uncheck that feature, okay, we're now back to using the value that is in the box.